Hello and welcome back to Season 1, Episode 2 of The Head Coach. My name's Daniel and coming up on today's episode, we take on the first game of the season with Bogner Regis and find out what our director of football's been up to during pre-season. So since you were last with me when we joined Bogner Regis, our director of football has been very busy and we've played through pre-season. So pre-season went pretty much as expected. The first game we'd already played before we joined the club. We beat our under-23 team and lower league Betts Hill, struggled away from home against the lower league team and lost narrowly to two teams above us in the pyramid, including senior affiliate club Portsmouth, which I didn't know at the time and has worked out for a director of football too. So moving on to those, our transfers. Nobody's gone out yet from the club, but we have had three players come in. So firstly, we'll do in reverse order. We'll do the low knee from Portsmouth. Centre midfield is a position we desperately needed strength, and we've got a few players there, but none of them were as good as Widrington, who we've brought in from Portsmouth, and even he's only two and a half star. But he's a good player, a central midfielder, and a decent passer of the ball and a decent physical player, which is exactly what we need at this level, and we're happy to have him there. If we have a look at his past, he hasn't yet played a professional game, but that will change today, spoiler alert. OK, the other position we desperately needed was a right winger and our director of football actually bidded for this guy first, which was great. Like our other player who we went to in the first episode, he can play on the left or the right, if I can get my words out. He's a right-footed player, so we'll probably play him on the right. He's not the quickest, but technically and mentally he's quite a good player, so we're more than happy to have him. We did have Hungerford Town chasing him as well, so that's probably the level of player we're looking at at the moment, to be honest. If we look at his history... He was released by Ipswich, he hasn't played a game in his professional career, and again, that will probably change today. Lastly, the first player who signed for us was Juma Omar, who is an 18-year-old centre-half, probably to provide cover at first, but he's not far off the first team level already. So if we have a look at him, he's come from MK Dons, where he was released at the end of last season, never played a professional game, and more importantly, is on non-contract terms, so we aren't actually paying him anything. So, he's also been quite busy with the coaching staff. So, if we have a little look. Since we've gone, we can see he's brought in a whole host of staff. He must have filled all the positions at the club. He's also let go one of our non-contract coaches, who we'd alluded to not being very good. And I've got to be honest, I'm quite surprised with the players, man, uh, the staff members, sorry. The words, they'll come eventually, that they've managed to bring in. So... John McManus, the Chief Scout, is the most important one. He's pretty good by this level. I haven't seen much better in my time on Football Manager at this level. And also the Head of Youth Development, who similarly is really good and should probably be at a higher level, to be perfectly honest. But we are paying him a bounty for his services. So there are a couple of the highlights. If we go and have a look at our staffing, you can see our recruitment team's now the best in the league. So considering how poor our director of football is at judging that stuff, he's done a good job to get them in. Our physiotherapy and our coaching teams are well above average, so we're more than happy with that. OK, so let's go and have a look at the dynamics. The match cohesion is still poor. We've only played a few games and there's only been a month or so together, but the other stuff's all OK. And moving into our first episode, we look in a decent position. You can see the wage bill. We've still got a bit of money to spend, I think, if we go and have a look. Yeah, so there's still about £800 left in the wage budget, which hopefully he'll use moving forward over the next month or so. So let's get into this first game. We're at home to Bath City before a couple of away games. And starting the game, if we get ourselves prepared nice and early, we have got in goal Dan Lincoln. A bit of a weird one for non-league. He was already here. He's the star player at the club, but he's a sweeper keeper. So we're going to play him now. I've done it before in non-league, and it hasn't really seemed to have a negative effect, so we'll go for it. We've got a very young but talented back four. So we've got Calvin Davis at right back, Christian Campbell at left back, and the centre halves of Wood and Field. They were all here and we introduced them in the first episode. If you want to go back and check that one out first. Ross Meldrum, who we signed on the right wing. Ben Swallow on the left wing, who was already here. Widrington, who our director of football loaned from our senior club, Portsmouth. And Dan Beck, who is an experienced box-to-box -box midfielder. I think he's one of the only ones we hadn't met yet. He's a very average run-of-the-mill experienced player, but he's a bit solid in most areas. He's a box-to-box -box midfielder, importantly, and he's played loads of games here, so he's going to be a good player for us. Up front, we've got Oli Pierce and Stefan Lubicic, who we met both of in the last episode. They're good players and will be key for our success this season. On the bench, we've got Crane, Omar, Block, Muit, I think that is pronounced as, and Sikaja. 
again, we start to run out of a bit of depth at this point, but hopefully our director of football will still bring in a couple more as the window goes on. Obviously, in the non non league, the window goes straight through to March, so he's got plenty of time, and most of them seem to be coming from free transfers anyway. Okay, so let's get into this first game of the season. We're not doing anything exciting. It's a bog standard 4-4-2, standard mentality, structured formation, with a few tactics. I always drop the defence a bit deeper because some of our lads are a bit slower, and I always go for a high tempo and a slightly more direct game. The most important one for me is to stay on feet, try to avoid red and yellow cards. And on this one, unusually, I've also put into float crosses and hit them early because this guy... Lubicic on loan from Brighton. He's very good in the air. He's decent heading, but his jumping reach is great as well. So hopefully we'll be able to have an impact in that way. We've got loads of players who aren't match fit yet. And in fact, before we do that, let's just change us back to the old-fashioned mode so we can see the match fitness is terrible. The pre-season friendlies haven't worked at all. Anyway, we go. Into the first episode. First game of the season, sorry. Okay, so we can see they're lining up with the 4-2-3-1, which is... I would suggest a bit unusual in the National League South, but nevertheless, they've got plenty of debutants as well, as well as us. So even players that were here when we joined the club, so Swallow and Woods already, and a couple of the Lonies, they're already making their debuts here. So we're not in a great position. We're just going to encourage them, get them to do their best. If it's not enough, it's not enough. We'll see what sort of a marker we can put down today and where we stand in this sort of league. That looks like a big old stadium. I've got to be honest, I don't know Bognor Eaches Stadium, but I'll be surprised if it's that big. And I forgot, as we're starting a new save, it always goes back to the traditional slow highlights. So we're going to get rid of replays as well. We don't need to see them. And we'll let them do the direct to camera for now. Actually, normally, I do the sideline in reverse, so it's like we're in the dugout then. Bear with us, there's nothing happening here, so. You're not missing much by me doing these settings at the moment, <laughs> unfortunately. Oh dear, what's going on here? It's taking ages. There we go, let's see if that works. So 15 minutes in on extended highlights and there's not been one yet. And all that's happened is we've picked up an injury. So it was that experienced midfielder Beck, which means alongside 18-year-old Widrington, I'm probably going to have to bring on 17-year-old Tommy Block now. Which is a bit risky, I think. I don't know, it's a crane could play centre midfield, so let's see what he's like. He's a 27-year-old experienced player, but he is awful in midfield. And the only other question is, can Widrington play in a different role? Okay, so we're going to go for that. Widrington's going to move to the box-to-box. -box, and we're going to bring Block on as our central midfielder defensively. I'd love to play further forward, but we need to be more cautious with this standard of team. We don't know how we compare with the rest of the league, and I'd guess not great. I can see they've got Nat Jarvis up front. I had him on FM17 for Gloucester and he was brilliant at this level. So, going to keep it nice and safe for now. Still no highlights. Bit of a boring game, to be honest. Normally at this level, one of the things I was going to say was the advantage you have is they're always end-to-end -end games because no one can defend. But that's not worked out either. Very big stadium. I'm not sure where this has come from. I don't know if Bognor Regis ground is genuinely like this. It's so they've got great facilities, but... Again, long ball football, that's what we like to see. The ball through, but the centre-halves are mopping up. But expect Holly Pierce as a poacher to be trying to get on the end of things like that, but not the case. We're going <laughs> the centre-halves. We haven't got much technical talent there. They're just long ball and hope. Here's Meldrum, the new sign on the right. Plays the long ball through. Here is Holly Pierce into the area. Puts the ball across Lubacic, and it's over. That's the sort of play we're looking for, though. Down the wings into the poacher and cross the box, ready for the target man to try and head in but not to be no shots on target in the game yet after 35 minutes but here's their free kick and they've scored is that Matt Richards I've got to check formerly Ipswich Matt Richards it is so he's a bit of a marker for what we can expect at this level and technically he's far beyond anyone we've got but that's it we're 1-0 down at home to Bath now not the best of starts but we haven't been outplayed yet so hopefully we can do something in this game one other thing we'll do while we're here, if we change these, because these recent event things are useless, let's get the league table in there, and let's get the, what else do we want in there? Latest scores, that'll be useful. Where are we? Up to 15th. We're still in the bottom half at the moment without the point, but too early to be reading the table at this point. Moving towards half time, we still haven't really had any more attacks 
to talk about. That's the only shot on target is that free kick they've scored, actually. So it's not been the greatest of games. Here comes Compton to Smith. They're all over us here. Matt Richards again. We've got to be careful with him. The only good thing is his fitness looks awful already. They're just out playing us now. They've got plenty of men in the middle. They're just playing round. And they've gone for another speculative ever, but it's gone wide. Five minutes to half time. I don't know if it's worthy of a change yet. I don't want to panic too early because I think we're probably doing all right. I just think Bath are probably a better side than us. I didn't actually check to see where they were predicted to come, so I might do that in the half time interval before we go. But nevertheless, it's a bit of a dull first half, not much attacking intent, but for a young team and with our one experienced player getting injured, we can't really complain with where we're at. So it is half time, we're one nil down, we're not gonna change anything just yet, we're not gonna panic. We're going to say we're a bit disappointed. There's a few fired up players, so let's see if that makes any difference in the second half. Here we go. Can we build an attack straight from the kickoff? Again, the long ball centre halves. I haven't put them on defensive centre halves because I wanted to avoid that, but they seem to be doing it anyway. We have looked a bit dodgy at the back, but they're all under 21, so I don't know what we can do. I didn't know how old the keeper was actually, Dan Lincoln. Let's have a look. Oh, doesn't work this screen. I forgot about that. Ten minutes into the second half, we still haven't done anything yet. It still seems to be Bath's game to lose. But there's a long ball. Will it go through? No, it's straight back to the keeper. Don't quite know why they needed to show that as a highlight, but there we go. Are they going to build an attack here, or are we going to get our chance to come back into the game? It's a long ball. It seems to be following a similar pattern, but we're just giving it away in midfield too much. We can't have an under-18 central midfield partnership. It's something I hope our director of football can look at. Again, as we mentioned in the first episode, the head coach, we work under the director of football, we just coach the team. He buys the players, he manages the contracts, he decides who stays and goes. Thought they were going to score again there, just pause for a moment. But yeah, we're not in charge of any transfers, we don't decide who comes into the club. We work with what we're given, we adapt our formation depending on which players we have, and we have to cope. Much is the modern way in the higher leagues in particular. We cannot just go and sign players to fill the gaps, which I'd love to do at this point, particularly in centre midfield, because it seems to be our only weakness. OK, I'm going to try and make another sub. I can see the two young lads are struggling midfield. I've got nothing to replace them with. Um, Lubacic up front is struggling, but it sort of ruin our game plan if we bring on another little man. I wonder if Ollie Pierce can do anything attacking-wise. He can't, so... I don't know what we're going to do at this point, to be honest. I'm going to bring on Crane for Widrington just to try and bring a bit of experience back into the midfield. He's probably going to have to change to a ball winner. And again, on support, that's fine. And the only other thing I'm going to do is give Omar a debut at centre-half for Wood. Because Wood's really struggled. He, I wasn't going to play him anyway. He's rated well by the assistants. But his mentality stats are terrible. His composure, his concentration... Here come Bath again from the corner. There's the advantage of Lubacic staying on. He had to clear. But again, we haven't really got an out ball at the moment. And it's just coming straight back at us. So there's Jarvis to Smith, as we mentioned. And it's gone wide. 25 minutes to go. I really can't see a scoring in this game, to be honest. I know Bath look a decent side. But I don't see much attacking talent from us at the moment. And something's going to have to change. Whether it be our director of football bailing us out with a couple of players or whether it be a tactical change, but I'm a conscious with the match cohesion not to do that too early in the season. The only other thing, of course, is we're only expected to finish mid-table, so we don't need to panic too much. Hopefully, if we can give them a settled run of seven or eight games in this formation with this tactic, they will settle in. It is a simple formation to get a grasp of the 4-4-2, especially a structure, two banks of four. But here we go. Here's a counter. Can we get one from here? Lubacic. Is he going to play it out to Swallow on the left? He is. We've got the early crosses on, but he lays it back into Lubacic. To Crane in the middle of the substitute. He finds Pierce. Can he produce a bit of magic? He can. What a goal that is from the edge of the box from Oli Pierce. He's a long-term player. I think that was his 50th league goal for the club. I vaguely remember looking at him in the last episode. I'm sure he was on 49, but we'll check that after the game. 15 minutes to go. We're level now. It was our first shot on target, but they've only had two as well. So... It's not a bad start, to be honest. If we can hang on for this result, I'll be pretty happy to start with. And I might go a bit defensive the last five, just to wind people up. There's a long goal kick. Lubacic wins the header again to Crane, who's definitely been an improvement in there. Lubacic again. He's still on the edge of the box. The ball's cleared, though. And it's fallen to Campbell at left back. Across to field. Can we build an attack from here? Bit of nice passing along the back, but we'd like to get further forward if possible. There's Meldrum. 
Lubacic loses out this time, unfortunately. But the ball's cleared, and we've got it again. This is a very long highlight. It's Meldrum through to Ollie Pierce. Can he do it again? Oh, it's a good save and behind for a corner. We're looking quite strong towards the end of this game. I don't know if we're fitter than them or not. But it certainly seems to be that we're on top the last 15 minutes. Swallow crosses. It's headed away as Crane and it's over. Or wide apparently. But Crane has definitely made a difference. I should have brought him on at first by the looks of things. But five minutes to go. I'm not going to go defensive now because we are on top just to see if we can nick a winner. But doesn't look like much is happening now. We've had two shots on target each. It looks a perfectly fair result based on this at the moment. Just see what the possession stats are. Again, fairly even. I don't think either team can have a complaint if it's one all. The only thing I hope is that Beck's injury isn't too bad because we haven't really got much more in centre midfield. Let's just hope they can't build a counter-attack here because it would be a sucker punch if they scored. Campbell's going to deal with that. Is he? No, it's Compton. Oh dear, here we go. <laughs> and it's cleared, thankfully. Half a minute left. Surely we've done enough to get the point here. I guess for a newly promoted side, which we forget, it, it would be a decent result. And I've got to check this stadium after the game to see what capacity we've got because it looks huge. Last moment, free kick in from Swallow, it's headed away, it's back to him, no Meldrum. And it's just gone wide and it's going to be cleared, I'm sure that'll be it. No, are they going to have time to build a counter? They are, here comes ball down the left, but thankfully it is all over. And it's one all on our first game, newly promoted side. I'm not too unhappy with the result, the only negative will be if Beck's got a long term injury. But we're quite happy with that, there we go. The assistant manager suggested it was a good effort, so surely we weren't the favourites there. But as it is, a one-all draw a point on the first game of the season. It's not a disaster. Oli Pierce getting off the mark. Let's just check if that was his 50th goal for the club. It was. So yeah, he's got 50 league goals for the club, just under one in three. And his first goal at this level, which is even better. Let's have a look at the match report. And most importantly, Dan Beck's injury. Oh, five to six weeks. That's not the start to the season. There's a couple of bank holidays and that coming up, so that will be a worry. Hopefully my director of football will help me out there. So we've had a couple of debuts. All good news, nothing disastrous there. We'll give a bit of praise to Ollie Pierce just to say well done. Hopefully he'll get a goal in the next game as well then. In terms of the stats, it's not too bad. It was an even game. We're happy to get the draw. The last thing we were going to check was just have a look at the stadium. Because I haven't had a look. I saw the other facilities report. Now 4,100 with 240 seats. That ground looked a lot bigger than that. But nevertheless, I won't argue. Okay, so here we go into our second game against Paul away from home. Unfortunately, no new signings or news of it since. There's no activity going forward. And no signings made since. So let's go into the next game. I'm going to go with exactly the same team with the exception of Beck, who I've forgotten to take out. So we're going to put James Crane in for him. And on the bench, we're going to put Doug Tuck instead. I will remember to do that myself next time before I come back. But as it is, same 11 with the exception. So we've got Lincoln in goal. A back four of Davis, Field, Wood and Campbell. Meldrum on the right wing. Swallow on the left with Widrington and replacement James Crane in the middle. Who we need to change to a ball winning midfielder. And up front, we've got Ollie Pierce, goal scorer from the first game. And Stefan Lubacic. The bench, exactly the same with Omar Block, Moit and Sikaja. And coming into the bench for Crane is Doug Tuck, who is a centre midfielder who isn't that good. But he has been here for over 150 games. So again, seems to be the pattern here. They've got, for a lower league club, they've got so many players who have been here for a number of years. But let's get into this game. We'll keep the tactics exactly the same and see if it works as competently away from home, which I'm a little bit suspicious of. OK, so they're playing a 4-3-3, which is, again, a bit unusual at this level. There normally used to be a lot of 4-4-2s here, but it's not the case this time. Maybe these two clubs are just an exception. So we'll encourage again, and we'll see what happens in this game. Hopefully, I mean, if we can take a draw again, I'll be quite happy with the start. But Paul haven't been as big a side at this level, and certainly haven't been there for as long. And I remember the mean talks about in the bottom end, so hopefully we can get a result here. But again, 4-3-3s I've always struggled with at this level when they have come up on occasion, so I wouldn't be surprised if we lose. Again, they've got the early run in here, so they look to be playing through the midfield. Again, they've got the extra man, so we can't be surprised by that. And here comes their first shot, but it's over and wide, thankfully. So yeah, after the first game, not too bad. We seem to be making decent progress. We've got a good young side, so if we can gel them together, hopefully they'll start improving. 
hopefully they'll get a bit of confidence and hopefully we'll start to get some results. So here is Lubacic to Crane. Good ball out to the right wing for Meldrum and can he get a good crossing for Lubacic to target? Man, he can't, but it's for Pierce and he's put it wide. That was a good chance early on. We've had a, couple, a shot already, which isn't a bad effort, but they've had a couple too. Again, the quality's low. There aren't many attempts going on target, so we won't be surprised if it's 0-0 for a little while yet. Here they come on the attack again. The one thing I would say with our defence is they do seem to be holding up fairly well. I'm going to regret these words, aren't I? Ball in, and I am going to regret it. Take back everything I was starting to say there. We have not coped well. First shot on target, first goal. And we are 1-0 down away to pull. Less than 10 minutes in, and it, things aren't looking particularly good for us at the moment. Let's see if we can find a way back in. We're not going to panic yet. Same as the last game, we went 1-0 down. We didn't panic. We managed to get back into the game late on. And hopefully our better fitness will come through again. If we have a look, they've got a lot of players in the 60s and 70s already. Whereas all of ours are in the 80s or above. So hopefully second half we can come back into the game. And if we need to, we can go a bit more attacking then. We've got some analysis advice. I always look at this. More direct passing, not quite yet. It's something we'll do later on if we're still a goal down. But for now, we're not going to worry too much. We're just going to keep playing to the game plan and keep the games tight. I know it's not the most exciting, it's not the way I like to play, but we're going to have to do that early on in this season until we find our footing. Here's Swallow with the cross, Lubacic is there, and it's blocked and behind for a corner. I thought that might deflect him for a minute there, but we're starting to assert pressure now. That's the good thing, it's just about getting the shots on target. Swallow crosses again, Cooper heads away and it's cleared. The corners really seem to be a problem. I'll have to set a setting for it because it doesn't seem to be working at the moment. And look at the counter, we've just been outplayed here. Jones is on the right and Campbell gets back and clears well. That's good play. But we're still getting outplayed. But Swallows won it back. Could we counter there? No, obviously not as the highlight ends straight away. Ten minutes to go to half time. I'm encouraged. We're starting to get back into it. The first ten minutes was a bit of a disaster. But since then we seem to be doing alright. So we won't worry too much for now. Coming up to half time and 1-0. We can't complain. We've got a superior fitness and hopefully in the second half that will show. Here we go then, doesn't look like we're going to get another highlight before half time, just a minute stoppage time again, and we're going to have to give another big team talk to see if we can get back into it. Any time now, there we go. Fourth goal of the season. Hang on, I'm going to have to go and have a look at that in a minute. Okay, so again we're just saying we're a bit disappointed and see if we can motivate them. Not as many fired up players this time. I've got to go back and check out that goal, was that him the striker? So he got a hat-trick on the first day of the season, and I'll tell you what, he looks a good player. He's on loan from Brighton as well, and I can start to see that we're not quite as good as I thought I was looking at the stats, and we may struggle this season. But again, there's not panicking for you. A couple of minutes into the second half, not much happening yet. Hopefully we can get ourselves back into the game through fitness, because as we've seen, they've clearly got a couple of better players than us. And it just looks to be petering out. It's a bit of a worry for us. We haven't really got much attacking drive. I think we only had one shot on target in the last game. We haven't had one yet in this. We're restricting pretty well. Just a free kick and a cross scored against us so far in the two games. But we're really struggling going forward. And I think it's about time we make a couple of early subs. Widrington again has struggled. So we're going to bring on Block. Not going to play the two young ones in midfield again if we can avoid it. Up front, I'm going to take the gamble and take Ollie Pierce off for Sakaja. They're not too different ability-wise and playing the same role. And we'll see if that one works out any better for us. We'll give it 10 minutes and then we might go a bit more attacking and direct if need be. Just to try and pump balls in the box against them. They've taken a corner. It's gone straight over everyone and Lubacic can attack. Can we get through on the counter? Oh, it's a great ball. Sakaja's through one-on-one -on -one from the corner. And he's put it in. The super sub is there. And I tell you what, if he plays like that a few times off the bench, he might be challenging Pierce for the first team role. But we're back on level terms. Similar pattern to the last game. We've got the fitness now and we've got the upper hand. Can we get on top? Here we go from the centre circle. Let's get another goal quickly. Come on. No, it looks to be back into control for them. They seem to have a bit of game management about them. But we're coming again. The ball's cleared, but there's no one there. The pressing's not really great. Considering we've got the better fitness, they still seem to be first to most of the balls. And again, they're just running through us there. Campbell heads away. The worst thing would be to let in a goal straight away. And Campbell's gone flying from his position. And we've let him in down the right. And, oh, they've hit the post or the bar. 
and it's cleared away. But it's just a bombardment here straight from the kickoff. They're just coming at us again and again and again. And here it comes. They're about 30 yards out. But Block wins it back. Well done, lad. We've got about 25 minutes now when we really need to take advantage of that equaliser. But still, it's our only attempt on target. And they seem to be attacking relentlessly now. I don't really know if I've got any other players who can change the game on the bench. But we're just clearing balls for clearing its sake now. And they're just the ball's camped out in our half. They've got every player bar the two centre-halves in our half of the pitch. And we're really struggling with them down that right wing. But here we go on the counter. Can Swallow do something here? He's gone long. And that's how we got the first goal. So Carl just throw again. Can he do it? Oh, that's a poor effort. That's absolutely awful and it's gone miles wide. We're going to have a look at the last sub now. Have we got anyone that can come on? The only one I can see is Crane is absolutely knackered and he's not playing great. So I'm going to take him off. I'm going to bring on Doug Tuck, who we haven't seen yet in this game. So he's a natural centre midfielder, so we might swap them around there. That's perfect. So we're going to play him in his strongest position. And Tommy Block's not too bad in that ball winning position, actually. So we'll leave him in there and we'll just swap him around. Well, we haven't seen him. He is our fourth choice centre midfielder that we're down to already. So not a great sign for the first two games of the season. But again, we're holding on OK. We've actually levelled up with the shots now near enough. And we're getting closer on the possession front, but it is something we're going to struggle with away from home with this team at the moment. Particularly if we keep coming up against teams who are playing three men in midfield. But with ten minutes to go, again, we said at the fifth, fourth or fifth minute we take another draw. So no complaints if this is the result. With five minutes to go, I'm contemplating going for an attacking formation. But I think we're just going to stay still and try and get the one-all draw. Two draws, staying unbeaten wouldn't be a bad start to the season while these lot are trying to gel in. There's Tuck to Swallow. He's gone four to Lubicic. Can he produce anything, the Brighton Loney? He's laid it back to Block, the 17-year-old. He's gone with a great ball out to Meldrum. Can he deliver? Gets the ball in. Sakaja, he's brought down. That's got to be a penalty, and it is. Who's going to take it? It says Sakaja there, and that is a bit of a worry. We haven't got anyone in double figures for penalty taking, but we'll let Sakaja take it. He scored a goal. He won the penalty. Let's see if he can get a second and become a hero here. He might warrant a start if he does that. Here he comes. He steps up. Doesn't look great. Oh, it's over. Oh, it's awful. Oh, that's the chance to win the game gone. We really need to sort out the penalty taking. I think that'll be the last time you see him take a penalty. And he definitely won't be starting the next game now. So Ollie Pierce has got his redemption. Here they come. And oh, this would make it even worse if they could nick a winner. But we've won it back. Lubacic from a stray pass. Sakaja, can he redeem himself? What on earth is that? He's just did it from 35 yards. It's nearly gone out for a throw-in. And again, we have been on top towards the end, but we haven't made our chances count. And if you don't score a penalty with five minutes to go, you can't really complain at not winning the game. A couple of minutes of stoppage time left. Lincoln with a big goal kick. Can we keep going again? No, it looks like they're going to counter us, if anything. They've gone back to defensive formation now. Tuck's going to clear. Just go long, son. There we go. That's the non-league way. Lubacic is up with the box, but it's gone back to the keeper. And Hutchins, the keeper, will clear. Sakaj just won it back on the edge of the box. And, oh, dear. I think that goal from his first shot is just a one-off. Because his finishing since has been absolutely awful. He's not worked the keeper. They've not been close. They've been at least 15 yards wide or 15 yards over in the penalties case. But here he is on the right. Block to tuck. Great ball through, but it's cleared away. Block again. We are camped in their area now for the last minute, which is good. Swallow's got it wide. Can he deliver? That's straight at the keeper. It's a frustrating end, but there have been signs of promise now. We've had showed some attacking intent in the last half an hour, and I'm quite confident of staying up after these two games. But I might be speaking too soon again. There's still 30 seconds, and they're coming forward now. We have got the two banks of four, which is good to see behind the ball. And the young right-back Davis hopefully will just hoof this miles away now. He hasn't. He's laid it into field. Who has done the right thing? And now Meldrum. Can he counter with 10 seconds to go? Ball up to Lubacic. I have to say Sakaj has made an impact. Even if his finishing has been poor, he has been the man who's changed the game in this one. So no complaints. It's one all. But again, it's a decent result. We would have loved to have scored the penalty and Nick to win. But at the end of the day, two, two games without a defeat, I would have taken that at the start. So not bad. Shame to miss the penalty, and he will not be taking one again. So let's see where that leaves us after two games in the table. It's not particularly important at this stage, but we're 13th. So a couple of games unbeaten. Not a worry. Any feedback on the game? 
Oh, it's his debut Sakaja, so a very mixed bag for him. Missed the penalty and a couple of other awful shots since signing from Dulwich Hamlet. Okay, last thing we're going to look at is our pre-season prediction, which we forgot to look at before the episode. The season preview, we are predicted to finish 12th, so we're actually underperforming according to that. That's not bad, actually, from both side. Mid-table, we'll take that if it comes along. Paul were down there in 19th, and Bath... Where are Bath? Oh, they're second favourites, so actually I don't feel too bad about that. If we can win our home games against all the teams below us, we'll be fine, so no problems with that. That's all from this episode. If you have enjoyed, please leave a thumbs up on there and subscribe to the channel for regular content from this story, The Head Coach, and our other FM18 challenges from Touch Mode. And I'll look forward to seeing you next time.